All right, looks like we're live. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to ERC's mini project announcement event. Uh, I'm Bhavya, a member of the management committee at ERC. So uh, yeah, coming to today's topic of discussion, uh, I'd like to, we'd like to introduce you all to the plethora of projects that we have lined up for you all. Um, and uh, before we go into the intricacies of the details regarding the mini projects, I just like to go some uh, small uh, facts that you'd like to begin with before we uh, establish a few topics about the mini projects there. Uh, so going on about the mini projects. So the duration of a mini project would be close to four to five weeks. And uh, any all of you would have to like you will have to after every session, you will have an assignment that you would have to submit. You can submit each of these assignments until the end of the mini project. After the end of the mini project, we will release an induction assignment, which would be totally based on what you've studied and covered, I mean, what you've done and covered in the mini project. So basic technical questions related to what you've done. Um, so our basic, uh, uh, basic uh, communication system would be Discord. So you will all, you will get the link of the Discord uh, server soon enough, and uh, you can, uh, you will be communicated all the details regarding the project will be communicated in that. And uh, everybody can take a minimum of a maximum of two mini projects, maximum of two mini projects. And uh, we will be sharing a form soon enough for what you would like to fill, uh, what projects you would like to take up after the mini project event. And uh, one important point to note is uh, choose correctly, wisely, and make sure what you want, you take what you want. Um, ensure that there are no mistakes in what you want to choose because uh, shifting projects later on would become a, a difficult task. So um, keeping that in mind. Uh, so a full list of all project members would be uh, soon allotted and we'll uh, help, we'll share this uh, soon enough by, uh, by tonight. And we'll, uh, we'll recommend that you look through your uh, project, project members list and contact your teammate. Uh, with the mini project teammate, right? So your project mentors will uh, inform you about all the weekly timings. Till then, we recommend that you go through all the learning resources in the spec sheets. And um, that's that's much of what I have to uh, convey before we go on to um, the mini project uh, events. So um, after this, we'd be going on with uh, Ajay explaining about the yeah, uh, the electronics project. So uh, over to Ajay. Hello everyone, um, I'm Ajay Krishna. I'll be taking this session to introduce uh, the electronics so many projects that the ERC is conducting. So um, let's start. So uh, we're conducting two uh, mini projects. One is uh, Arduino clock and the other is uh, Arduino car. So um, you can choose uh, either or both of them. Uh, like they're based on the uh, Arduino microcontroller. So yeah. So uh, these are the mentors uh, for the for the mini projects uh, electronics. Um, like me, uh, Tanay and Rohan will mostly take the uh, clock one. Uh, although like we comment for both the projects, uh, the three of us will take the clock one mostly, and uh, Sahil and Rushil uh, will take the car project. So uh, you can contact us for uh, doubts. Uh, so coming to the topic of the. Uh, many projects like as i said you'll be using uh, the arduino microcontroller so uh, that begs the question uh, what's a arduino i mean what's a microcontroller so uh, let's let's see uh, microcontroller is a pretty simple device uh, it uh, all it does is uh, although it sounds complicated complicated 
all it does is uh, send uh, uh, voltage output signals on specific pins and uh, read inputs in uh, specific pins so uh, uh, that's that's basically all a microcontroller uh, microcontroller does although it has other features such as memory and all and uh, it's up to the uh, programmer to program the microcontroller uh, to you know to perform uh, various tasks so the one that you see on the right is the uh, arduino uno uh, that you will be using for the uh, mini project for the mini projects uh, these are the these are the pins where you will uh, connect like different components uh, and uh, con program the microcontroller and control them basically so yeah For the clock one, uh, we let's just uh, start with the clock one. Uh, first, I'll just give a brief description. Uh, so uh, these are some of the components that will be used uh, or that you'll use uh, during the project. Um, although these are not obviously these are not all of the components. Uh, these are some of them. Uh, the the main main ones basically. Uh, you have the um, LCD display uh, that you'll use for the uh, clock features, and then you have the numeric keypad. Uh, where you'll give the input uh, time and you know uh, for timer and clock and all and then uh, you have the seven segment display uh, this is a, a different kind of display from lcd display uh, it has seven segments like these are uh, segments as you can see so uh, so that's why it's called seven segment you also have the decimal point uh, so you can control this as well to uh, for the like you can use this for the clock project if you want at the end so um, coming to the timeline, um, it, this this uh, we'll keep we're keeping it around five to six weeks. Uh, so um, like this is the these are the milestones. Every week you'll be given like you'll this is just to guide you to uh, you know uh, as you progress through the project. This this timeline will help guide you to you know what all you need to do for the week basically. So let's just go through it uh, briefly. So uh, in the first week you will learn about uh, the basic stuff like C programming. Uh, Arduino basics and uh, Tinkercad. Uh, Tinkercad is a simulation software that you'll use for the project. Uh, I'll come to that in a minute, uh, how to uh, use that. Um, for the second week, you'll use the LCD display and uh, uh, build a simple clock and stopwatch. Like this, uh, like the one as I just showed in the previous slide. You'll use that and build a simple clock, basically just to give time and uh, uh, like for the stopwatch, you'll use uh, push buttons to uh, you know stop or start uh, the time basically. And for V3, you learn to use the numeric keypad uh, that I showed in the previous slide, and you'll interface it with the clock and the Arduino, and uh, you can set time uh, in the clock through the keypad. So that's that you'll, you'll do that in V3, and in uh, week four, you'll build a timer. Uh, now this is different from a stopwatch, like terminology wise, like a uh, stopwatch is basically it starts counting from zero. Timer is uh, you set a time and you start counting from uh, from that, so counting down basically. So that's our timer. Uh, for week five, uh, because like we wanted to offer some like variety because you've been using the LCD display only. So uh, we thought of uh, uh, you know give, keeping other displays, like you can use the seven segment display or the or an LED matrix. You learn that and you learn to use those and uh, like build a simple clock so that's that's uh, week five and uh, uh, week six the, that's the final one uh, you'll build you'll implement all the clock the stopwatch and the timer uh, functions into uh, one final device uh, that you'll have to submit uh, at the end of the project so yeah now uh, coming to the assignments like uh, we are going to keep three ma uh, three main assignments. Uh, so so let, let's just go over them uh, briefly. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, the as I said, like this uh, assignments are biweekly. So every two weeks you'll we'll, uh, have to uh, you'll submit the assignment. And the first assignment is uh, what you did at the end of week two. Like uh, you had to uh, use the LCD display and uh, build a, a simple clock. So that's the first assignment. Uh, second assignment is uh, uh, like using a numeric keypad and uh, uh, creating a timer plus stopwatch. Like uh, you'll you'll build that using the LCD display. Uh, you use some push buttons to uh, like 
implement these features stop start and uh, reset like you use uh, push buttons like which are basically switches so that you'll submit at the end of week 4 now uh, coming to the mini assignment uh, like because the uh, uh, you will be only using the lcd display we thought like uh, and we want like uh, we thought it would be like there won't be enough variety kind of so we thought we decided to keep the keep this small mini assignment because it's it's pretty simple uh, like you will create a simple clock using uh, uh, one of these like you can choose a seven segment display or led matrix like whichever one you want so uh, that'll be the end of week five uh, yeah so that's that's the mini assignment and the final assignment the assignment three uh, you'll basically implement all the functions as i said in the previous slide whatever you've done in assignment one and two uh, like you'll be implementing that into one uh, final device that'll be the, the end of your uh, the, the project basically <laughs> So uh, that's it for Arduino clock. Uh, I'll also go over the Arduino car, the project. So yeah, uh, these are some of the components that you'll uh, use uh, during the project. Uh, the uh, uh, like you obviously have to use the DC motor uh, to drive the car. Uh, you have this thing, uh, the motor driver, L293D motor driver. It's a it's an IC that that you'll uh, uh, integrate with the Arduino like uh, it's used to control the dc motor like you can't directly connect, connect the dc motor to the arduino to uh, drive it so this is to uh, like to be able to give it like specific specific like directions with which which direction to spin like uh, clockwise anti clockwise or in which uh, speed and all etc for that so that for that uh, the this motor type was used and then finally the ultrasonic sensor so um, in this car project, you will also be asked to uh, implement uh, obstacle avoidance uh, 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 principle, basically. So you'll use this sensor to see how much distance uh, the uh, any like some object is from the car, and if it's too close, uh, it, it'll avoid it, basically. So that's that's what this thing is used for. Uh, so coming to the car itself, uh, the uh, the car that you'll build is a differential drive robot. So uh, now, what is that? So let's just briefly look through it. So, what a differential drive uh, is basically what it is is that both the uh, wheels, like these are the wheels. Uh, this is the axle, the left wheel, right wheel. So um, both the wheels are uh, driven at different speeds, like V L and V R. So they're different, driven at uh, different speeds. Now, for a normal car, uh, you both like. Uh, the wheels on either side of the vehicle are driven at the same speed and you just turn the entire axle to turn the car uh, but uh, in this one what happens is that you let, let's say suppose uh, you keep this uh, wheel stationary and you uh, you know give this some finite finite velocity like uh, you'll give it some finite velocity so what will happen is that this thing will start spinning so uh, like that's the mechanism in which uh, how it will uh, turn uh, the the car will turn basically so and you'll uh, use two motors to drive each wheel like uh, you'll use one motor here and one motor here and you'll use the arduino and the motor driver to uh, to drive the vehicle so th that's that's basically what a differential drive is like uh, it's driven using the uh, like the like basically the difference in the velocities of the two uh, wheels basically uh, so yeah uh, now coming to the project itself uh, like same with the clock, uh, like it'll be go, it'll go on for like five to six weeks. Uh, so uh, let's let's just go th over this. The first week is uh, same as clock. Uh, we learn the basics about the C language. C language is the one that you use to code uh, Arduino. So we'll have to learn that. And then uh, you'll also learn about uh, using Tinkercad. Like as I said, Tinkercad is a simulation software. Uh, I, I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, in the second week. You will learn to use the IC, the uh, the motor driver. This thing is the motor driver. You will learn to use that to control the DC motor, like uh, giving it specific velocities and uh, you know uh, stuff like that. And in week three, uh, you will learn about how uh, a differential ro uh, drive robot works and like implement it, uh, implement a basic uh, this thing on uh, 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 like uh, with Arduino and the motors. Like that's week three and week four uh, basically. And in uh, uh, week five, you learn to use the sensor or the ultrasonic sensor 
so uh, this sensor will you will uh, it will be used to uh, like detect uh, detect using ultrasonic waves it will detect the distance from the uh, from an obstacle and uh, like basically you'll just learn how to use it uh, in week 5 and in week 6 finally you will implement the uh, like week 4 in week 4 you basically you created a like a basic car uh, like you controlled the like you used two dc motors to build a differential drive car uh, in week 6 you will implement like both the sensor and the uh, uh, the differential drive car uh, and you will implement like an obstacle avoidance uh, to the car so like depending on the distance from some obstacle uh, it will uh, avoid the the obstacle basically so yeah uh, now assignments for uh, the car project uh, the uh, first assignment is just the you'll just use the uh, motor driver uh, motor driver to control the uh, motor uh, through the serial monitor. Now, uh, the serial monitor is basically the, a screen that pops up uh, when you in the in the Arduino uh, this interface. So you, you just type the like values in the serial monitor and uh, you'll control the uh, motor basically. So that's assignment one. Uh, assignment two is you will write uh, C functions. Uh, these are these are the different functions that you'll write. If you're uh, new to programming, that's that's fine. You'll learn about uh, what functions are and how to use them. So um, these are the functions that you'll use, uh, that you'll write for the uh, uh, the car. Basically, if forward function, basically inside the forward, uh, the robot should move in the forward direction. And the backward function, uh, you will implement it such that the robot moves in the uh, backward direction. Same with turn right, turn left, and uh, move in a circle of radius A. And you can decide that radius with your convenience, whichever you want. So that's uh, assignment two. Uh, you'll implement that, this with uh, the uh, the uh, the motor and the driver. Like you don't need the the thing yet, the sensor yet. So that's for assignment three. In assignment three, you'll use the sensor as well, and then like implement this whole uh, the whole entire car with uh, the differential drive mechanism. And uh, you'll uh, in the circuit you'll implement the obstacle avoidance as well using the sensor. So depending on the distance from an obstacle, uh, it'll uh, uh, like avoid the like it'll avoid the obstacle basically, so that's uh, that's assignment. That's the final assignment you'll submit. It's like uh, uh, the whole thing at the end of the of uh, the project, mini project. Uh, so uh, coming to Tinkercad, uh, this is the simulation software that you will be using for the project. Like because it's online, so we can't really like we can't obviously can't submit uh, the circuit basically. So we'll use a simulation software. Now, uh, if you have an Autodesk account, uh, I guess half of you will already have one uh, with uh, Engineering Graphics. So uh, if you have an Autodesk account, uh, you can log in with your Autodesk account into Tinkercad to uh, uh, get the this software. Like AutoCAD, Autodesk offers uh, softwares to students for free. So if you don't have one, you can use your bids email to uh, create one. So that you can, you can do. Uh, now there's this another alternate software that you can use to you know if you want like uh, because Tinkercad doesn't have like every component some of the components that Tinkercad doesn't have um, the Wokvi simulator has this is the simulator this, uh, this is a link for it so you can use this uh, to you know to just play around or whatever so that's that's the uh, about the software that you'll be using uh, so yeah uh, any questions. I'll wait for a minute or two for questions. Uh, yeah, so uh, there are many questions regarding uh, uh, purchasing any components. So as I said, you'll be using the simulation software. Uh, so you don't need to purchase anything. Obviously, you can uh, buy your own components and like build on your own. But uh, you don't you don't actually need to buy any uh, uh, 
uh, material to do the project because you'll be using the simulation software. Uh, yeah, also one clarification, the car and clock are two different mini projects. So uh, you can you, you can choose either of them. Uh, so you can choose a maximum of two mini projects. So you can choose both of them, but the learning cur curve for uh, both the projects are same. So if you if you're willing to take two mini projects, then I guess it's better to take another one because you know you'll be able to learn a lot more uh, because the learning curve for both of them are the, uh, are the same. Uh, assignments, uh, are the assignments subparts of mini projects or are they separate from it? Uh, now, uh, like basically they, they are part of the uh, mini projects. You'll, you'll some, you have to submit these assignments like uh, to, you know, uh, like they are the they kind of the, you know, project assignment. Like the final one is there obviously, but you'll have to submit the mid assignments as well. So that's, that's what. Uh, the software Tinkercad is uh, the alternate one, the the, the one which I uh, uh, mentioned, a uh, Bokwe simulator. Uh, uh, that is that's free. Uh, one second. Uh, think, yeah, this this simulator, this is free. This is also free only. Uh, so you can you can you, like, we'll be using the Tinkercad simulator. Uh, but uh, like for some missions, we'll be asking you to send your link for the for Tinkercad from the Tinkercad simulator. Uh, but you can use this as well if you if you want to you know, play around or whatever. So yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that's it from my side. Uh, the next project will be about uh, the robotic. Uh, uh, ro the robotic arm. Uh, Ishan will uh, uh, will explain that. So I'll hand over to Ishan. everywhere in the industry so it's uh, it'll be nice for you guys to learn a bit about how to uh, make them how they are designed different parts of it and stuff like that so okay i think there's some issue i'll restart what i just said just one second Okay, uh, am I audible now? Can someone confirm? Okay, right. I think it's sorted. So yeah, I'll start up again. Uh, hi, I'm Ashan Tandon. Uh, I'm in second year and uh, in mechanical engineering. I'll introduce you to the robotic arm manipulator project uh, got you by ERC. Right, so um, going over the 
slides again. Uh, let's look at a couple of um, applications of uh, robotics, uh, robotic arm in the industry. So we all know robotic arm are extensively used in uh, for things like um, uh, car manufacturing, where they use for painting, they use for welding, and uh, they use for testing and labeling of let's say cans or something. So they're everywhere in the industry, and it'll be nice for you guys to be able to learn a bit more about uh, how they're designed and uh, what what type of engineering goes into in making one. So uh, as out of all of these examples, I've given a few uh, like two main ones on the slides. On the left hand side, you can see the Da Vinci robot, uh, which is a surgical robot that's used for uh, like minimal invasive surgeries. And uh, although it's not completely autonomous, but still the precision gives you the the precision it gives the sur surgeon in terms of accuracy and the type of movements it can do uh, are truly remarkable. Uh, it uses uh, like certain handles that the surgeon can use to manipulate the arms and a different sort of tools and a different sort of uh, cutters can be attached at the end for different type of procedures. Uh, on the right hand side, we have the Canada arm, which was uh, used on, in the space station for uh, docking different type of payloads, different uh, uh, small space shuttles and stuff like that. So it was, an, again, uh, like a major application of robotic arm. Right, so uh, coming back to the project, let's see what you learn if you get into this project, if you plan, if you like it, and if you want to uh, do it in the next couple of weeks. So we'll start with CAD design. And CAD is used extensively when you want to prototype and model your designs. Uh, and most of the times, we before manufacturing, we produce the whole design in a CAD environment and simulate all, its, all of its parts to make sure everything is working fine and everything will be fine once we actually build it in real life. So it's a really important skill to have. And I'm sure you'll be using this a lot if you plan on going to, uh, if you plan on doing design work in the future. So um, because, because CAD design is such a major part, we'll be focusing a significant amount of time in uh, learning these uh, this CAD design through online resources. And then we'll also hold some uh, uh, doubt sessions where you can ask us doubts where we can teach you stuff that you have uh, trouble understanding and stuff like that. Uh, you'll also have different sort of assignments to uh, get you comfortable with the whole process so that you're confident if you want to manufacture, if you want to design something later on all by yourself. Right, so uh, as we're doing the robotic arm uh, project, uh, we will obviously looking at different type of joints and speed reducers. So if you attended the domain introduction session of ERC, I introduced this uh, bit in that. So we'll be focusing a lot more uh, in detail regarding all of this. Uh, you'll be you'll understand what type of joints are used in different sort of arms. Uh, as an example, I've given a arm of a, a the, the mechanism of a wrist joint in a robotic arm. Uh, you can see this is the elbow joint and this is the uh, wrist joint. So you can see how flexible that is, and it almost simulates our own wrist where it can and prob probably even better than that. It gives you a multiple degrees of uh, freedom and. Um, it's truly amazing design. So we'll learn stuff like this in the course. We'll see how you can model these joints, how you can use them in your own designs. And you, finally, from all of the stuff that you've learned until now, you'll be making your own arm, uh, your own unique design. Right, so um, coming at, towards the end, we'll be focusing on the forward and the inverse kinematics, because once you've made a design, you need to be able to uh, like simulate the end effector, and you need to be able to understand where, uh, what all locations your arm can reach, uh, how it'll move around, what sort of acceleration it, will it have. And obviously, from the point of view of controls, uh, you need to know the positioning and everything. So we'll look at some of the forward and the inverse kinematics. We'll do a like, small project in MATLAB as well to uh, get you more comfortable with it. So coming to the milestones, right? So it's almost a five to six week project. And uh, we'll be starting with CAD design in week one and two. We're giving it almost two weeks so that if you don't, you, you don't have to rush it. Uh, you can get comfortable with the whole procedure. Uh, we'll hold meetings for you to uh, ask doubts. And uh, we can teach you stuff that you have problems in. And um, by the end of two weeks, you'll probably be very uh, comfortable by making, to, uh, you'll be comfortable making stuff from the, around the house. Uh, if you have a design on paper, you'll probably be able to reproduce it on a, a CAD environment. Uh, then moving on in week three and four, uh, we'll start uh, holding some lectures, uh, like small, small lectures, where uh, we'll teach you the basics of gas 
and uh, how they work, what are the different parameters we use, and what type of gears are used in different scenarios. And by the through gears, we'll also introduce the parametric modeling uh, to you guys. This is part of CAD design, which is uh, really useful when you have an assembly and you want to create multiple uh, parts from it. So let's say um, you have something and you want to create a different size uh, of gear, or let's say you want to create a gear of, with different number of teeth, uh, with a different teeth shape and stuff like that. So instead of modeling it all over again, uh, what you can do is you can make, make a parametric model and change a couple of parameters and tweak a couple of things, and you'll have a completely different uh, design in your hands. Uh, then we'll also focus on, as I mentioned earlier, the joints and the speed reducers. I'll, I won't like uh, dive too much into that. Um, and in the week five, as I mentioned, we'll go to forward and the inverse kinematics and some simple MATLAB application. Uh, coming to week six, uh, this will be like the combination of everything that you've learned until now. Uh, it will be sort of an open-ended project that you'll uh, that we'll give you, where you have to create a robotic arm using all of the information that, that you've gained until now. And uh, we're hoping that everyone's design would be different because you'll use different things that we've taught, and it'll it won't it won't have like one correct answer. You can uh, do it as uh, like in whatever way you want. Right, so coming to software, we'll use Fusion 360 for CAD design because it's free and you can uh, get it the, the education version through your bits ID. And uh, we'll use MATLAB for forward and inverse kinematics. And SOLIDWORKS is another software that's extensively used in the industry. So uh, we won't be starting with that because it's paid, uh, but we'll give you a slight introduction session at the end uh, to get you familiarized with it and how you can transfer from Fusion 360 to SOLIDWORKS. And trust me, it won't be very hard. So lastly, coming to logistics, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be holding a weekly meeting for protests and uh, updates on the work that you've done. Uh, from week three to five, we'll hold a regular lectures to teach you a couple of things. Uh, and other than lectures, we'll obviously provide you some resources uh, so that if you want to like go dive much deeper into the topic, uh, you can obviously do that. We are completely open uh, and uh, we'll I highly appreciate if you want to do that. And if you if you find all of this interesting and if you want to apply for it, you can refer to the handout for all the details. Um, uh, at the bottom left, we have the mentors for this project. Uh, me, uh, Yash, and Akshit will be mentoring you guys. And we've also provided numbers if you want to ask some doubts or using the project if you want to clarify something or anything. Right, so let's look at the, some questions. Uh, Right, so type out anything you want to ask in the chat. I'll try to answer to my level best. All uh, right, so also, um, Uh, so you guys like we'll go slow through this whole process uh, and we'll be giving you like certain breaks and all and you have your uh, exams and all in the middle as well. So if you've given enough time for you to catch up, uh, if you miss out anything, uh, the, all the projects and all everything would be like bi-weekly so that if you miss out one week of it, you can still cover up in the next week. So don't worry about uh, like it being too hectic or something. Uh, someone has asked, will we be simulating the ARM2? Uh, yes. So uh, as I mentioned, we'll use uh, uh, Fusion 360 to create the whole ARM. So you'll be able to move it around. You'll be able to see how the joints are working. And it'll be a completely dynamic model. Uh, you don't need to like buy anything or make it physically. It will completely be on uh, CAD. Uh, so how frequently will the meetings be held? So uh, we'll have like once uh, once a week meeting in the week one and two, uh, because during that time you'll be learning CAD on your own, and we'll hold sessions to uh, clear out the doubts and teach you anything if you want. And it's not a very solid um, timeline. So if you have 
some doubts if you want us if you want to meet us you can always text us and we'll probably hold a meeting uh, to uh, clear out whatever you want to ask us and uh, from week uh, three onwards from three to five we'll be holding regular meets in the week uh, like multiple times a week because that's when we'll be start starting to actively teach you something uh, and not like refer if not like letting you refer to some other resource Uh, someone uh, someone has asked, do we have to get the hardware? So no, uh, you don't need to get any hardware. It will completely be online. So uh, like no physical stuff, sadly. Right. So okay, I'll end the presentation then. Okay, I think we're live. So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Atharva. I'm in second year, and I'll be talking about the controls mini project. So, this is probably something that not a lot of you have learned formally before. Even the first, my first time with controls was when I was in first year, and I selected the controls mini project. So, I'll just give you a brief overview of what we will do in controls project. Uh, so. Fundamentally, what is controls, right? So this figure right here, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. That is a PS4 controller, a PS5 controller, I'm sorry. It's a controller, right? So that controller, what it does is it, uh, it enables you to give some input to your character in the game or whatever you are trying to control, basically. So that's exactly what a controller is, that it gives an input to your system to get to a desired goal. So when you're playing a game, you give different commands of moving, or if you're playing shooting games and you're like firing, ducking, and stuff like that, you're giving basically, you're basically giving inputs to your system, which is the game, and then you want to get to whatever desired goal there is. So this is manual control where you are processing what's going on in the game, you're calculating what to do, and you are giving out an output, uh, which is going through the controller into the system. So similarly in robotics, Control is extremely important and automating this process of controlling is based on whatever feedback you get from your system is something that makes a lot of robots really cool and functional. So mainly we will be uh, covering this over this like mini project. So let's just have a small example about what a controller in the real world might look like. So. I'm sure you're aware of what is called as cruise control, which is basically maintaining the speed of your vehicle at which it is going. So you can set a particular speed. Let's say you're going on a highway and you want to maintain 80 miles, uh, kilometers an hour or whatever speed you want. So then there's an automated system in a lot of cars and how that works is basically. So have a look at this block diagram. Uh, so you have a controller which will basically affect your acceleration or braking, right? Because you might want to increase your speed or decrease your speed according to where you are with respect to where you want to be. So let's say you're at 90 and you want to go to 80, you'll need to break. Then you'll have, so you basically you will, your controller will, will feed an acceleration command or a braking command into your system. That system will execute it and you will have some sort of a sensor that will tell you what your speed is. Because if you don't know what your speed is, then you cannot control it, right? So you'll need some sort of sensor that will tell you what your speed is. And then, so that basically that is your feedback in this case. So feedback is what we read from the system and we process that information to give a new control command. And that feedback will basically be processed by your control system. And then accordingly, your, your uh, controller will be adjusted, right? 
so that was basically a very small example of how a controller might work uh, a logic you can you might think about could be let's say you want to maintain 80 so if you go above 80 you want to break if you want to if you are go below 80 you want to accelerate right so this is a very crude example of how you can do this uh, how you can do that we'll discuss more about speed control later in if you join the mini project so but that was just a basic example to tell you what a controller is okay so going on to what an inverted pendulum is right so again this is a very uh, this might be a curious thing for you because even i have heard this name for the first time when i was in first year so what a normal pendulum has is you have uh, when you displace it by whatever uh, angle, your force of gravity is producing a torque that is getting it back to the equilibrium or normal position, to the vertical position, right? So it is sort of a self-settling system. If you disturb it, it will go back and settle. Now, if you invert this exact arrangement and place it on some mechanism which has the freedom to rotate like this, let's say this is a cart and you have this uh, pendulum where it has a mechanism to rotate. So it is very hard to keep this thing exactly vertical. And if you want to have an uh, example, like if you want to try this out yourself, you can do it right now. You can take a pencil or a pen on your hand and you can try to balance it. And you will realize that it is extremely difficult because even if there is a slight displacement, it tends to completely go down because gravity starts producing a torque that will take it away from the vertical position and then it will settle down like a normal pendulum. So this is what the problem is all about. The problem is about balancing this pendulum in an inverted position. Okay, so we'll quickly go over. I'll show you this video. I hope you can see the video. I'll let it run for two or three times. So you, as you can see here, there are three pendulums attached to this, and this is a base that is moving, and uh, it is going to maintain it uh, its position. So as you can see, it starts from nowhere. It starts from the bottom, and it completely brings it to an upright position and then it maintains that position. So this is something which is very difficult to do and it is uh, like difficult to do in the sense that we don't, we might not imagine it that way, but there's a lot of uh, mathematics and a lot of control theory that goes behind it. So we'll be exploring something similar to that in this project, just that we'll have a single pendulum instead of three combined pendulums that we have here. Okay. So i show another video. That's a, this is a cooler video. So in this video, we have two drones and they're passing that, they are passing a stick across from one, one another. So initially the drone on the right has a stick and it has balanced that. And later on, as you will see, you can see in the slow motion, it's throwing that stick off into the air. The other drone is catching it and then it's maintaining it. So at this point, we cannot do something this complex but the start of this project might get you to do something like this because a crucial part of what these drones are doing is balancing that stick right which is which is actually just exactly a inverted pendulum so i'll just play the video one last time and then we can move on to the progression and how we are going to go about the video okay i think uh, the slides are stuck i think uh, sorry about that. Okay, let me have a look. I think there's some issue with the videos. Yeah, let me see what's happening. Just a minute. So I guess there's some issue with playing the videos. So I'll share the links to those videos in the chat after the presentation is over. I'll go over the 
progression of how we'll proceed with the project for now. Uh, really sorry about this issue. We'll, uh, I'll, we'll, I'll send the links in the chat. You can have a look at those videos. They're pretty cool. And uh, yeah, OK, so about uh, the progression of this progression of the project, right? Uh, I'll just wait for a minute I'll, to confirm whether the slides are visible now. Really sorry for this delay. There seems to be some sort of an internet issue from my side. I'll send links to those videos in the chat. Okay, so yeah, so my slides are visible now. I'll continue. Uh, yeah, so about the progression of this video, uh, in the first weeks, we'll go over Python. And uh, even the ones who choose an automation mini project will have Python. So probably we will go through this together. Then the next in the next part, we have control theory. So basically, Python is how we do it. We're going to use Python, and we're going to implement it that in Python. And control theory is what we will do, right? We'll try to control the inverted pendulum. So that's what we'll go over in the next few weeks. And uh, in the next, in the second week, rather. In the third and fourth week, uh, where do we do this, right? So we need an environment in which you can simulate this because right now we are at home, so we cannot build this physically. So for that, we use OpenAI Gym. Uh, it's an environment where you can simulate these uh, sort of, uh, you know, environments and uh, a sort of models. I'm sorry, you can simulate these sort of models, and then you can uh, write a controller for that. So that is what we'll use for the integration and the final implementation. So here is a look at the handout. So the handout will also be there. Uh, like you'll find it on the website as well. And uh, so like I said, the first week, the basics of Python. In the second week, we have control theory. And from the third week onward, we are going to try and integrate what you've written into OpenAI Gym. So I'm even if you're not heard of OpenAI Gym, that's fine. Uh, we'll guide you how to we'll guide you through that. It's uh, very intuitive and it uses Python, so uh, you'll be able to adapt to it easily. Okay. Uh, right. So the mentors. So mentors for this project uh, are me, Atharva. We have Dhruv, Yash, and Aditya. Uh, I'll pause here for a moment. If you want, if you need to contact any one of us for any routes related to the projects, we are also there on the robotics groups as well as you can take our numbers from here and you can message us if you have any doubts okay so uh okay so about what's further ahead right so we're done with this project what's like why you should take this project right because after the project is done what lies ahead for you so there are a lot of applications of control theory uh it is basically uh any functional robot uh, if you want to have any functional robot that interacts in any way with the environment you're going to need a robust control system. So for example, controls of a robotic arm or uh, an, an autonomous vehicle or of drones. And the video that I was trying to show you was uh, had really cool drones. So I'll share it in the chat once this is done. And if you have a look at it, you might be inspired to try and uh, check out control theory. OK, so that was it from my side. Uh, I'm open for, OK, so I'm, yeah, you can have questions. I think I missed this slide. Yeah, so basically further ahead, we, there's a, there are a lot of, there's a lot of applications of control theory. I'll share the videos uh, in the chat. And uh, yeah, I guess we can have questions. If you have any questions, you can uh, put them in the chat box. OK, so if you haven't learned Python, that is completely fine. Even I, I did this exact project last year. And that is how I was introduced to Python. So you can get started and comfortably complete the project uh, 
like within the four or five weeks. Okay, so if nobody has any more questions, then that was it from my side. Uh, coming up next is uh, our many projects from automation. So you can have a look at that. Advanced Python programming is, uh, I just saw a question, advanced Python programming is not needed uh, at this point. Uh, if you are comfortable in Python, that is very good. If you are not, that's completely fine. Uh, if you want to, you can explore more advanced algorithms if you have the knowledge, but that is completely optional. It is not any, uh, that, that is not, that is beyond the scope of the project. So for the project, we'll just need basic, the basics of Python and you'll easily be able to pick those up. Okay, so I guess there's no more question. I'll, I'll end my presentation here. Coming up are uh, presentations from the autonomous uh, mini projects. Thank you. So, hey guys, I'm Aditya Parandekar and uh, I'm currently in my second year and today we'll be uh, going through the path planning mini projects. Yeah, one second guys. Cool. So, hey guys, I'm Aditya Parandekar and today we'll be going through the path planning mini project. So, yeah, so what is path planning? So, I'll basically give you a brief overview about what is path planning. So, for robots to navigate autonomously, there are two things that should be taken care of. The first thing is the perception. So what the robot perceives. And uh, the, the, this step involves mapping of the environment, mapping of the environment in which the robot currently is. So uh, when we get the obstacles, uh, the path planning step is triggered. So in path planning, um, we'll be able to uh, like plot a path from a particular start position to a particular goal position, avoiding every obstacle. So path planning is basically a computational problem to find sequence of points or orientations, which will, which the robot will follow. So, yeah, so this step is very important step for making the robots autonomous. So path planning is broadly divided into two categories. The first is graph based planners and second is sampling based planners. So yeah, graph based planners involve planners like Dijkstra, A star, D star light, PRM, and many more. 
so basically a graph based langer does is it provides it search it searches for a uh, suitable path from already available available given set of fixed routes so this concept can also be used in uh, this this concept is also used by google maps so yeah so this is a visual representation of an graph based a star planner uh, so basically this green uh, square here is the start position uh, the red square is the goal position and the gray squares are the obstacles so what you can see here is that we get a shortest path from the green square to the red square so this is uh, graph based planning uh now we'll look at sampling based planners so planners like rrt and its variants come under this so this planning this sampling based planners are rather more complicated than the uh, graph based planners as these planners involve uh, these planners rely heavily on collision checking so let's look at a visualization of the sampling points uh, so as you can see here the blue polygons uh shows the obstacles and the points are sampled um, around the obstacles in the environment and they are connected in such a way that uh, we get a path from a start position to the goal position so points are sampled randomly here uh so coming to the implementation of these planners so this basically is an omnibase which was developed by our seniors at erc and uh, what the omnibot here is doing is it is navigating through the environment avoiding the obstacles to reach a particular goal position uh, the planner implemented here is rrt which is rapidly random exploration tree so once you are thorough with all the planners and thorough with some basic concepts of ros you will you will like you will be able to implement this in an gazebo environment or and even in the real life so yeah the aim the aim of this mini project is to implement different planners and compare them different as in gra graph based planners and sampling based planners using python so and uh, and visualize them using matplotlib coming to the timeline of this uh, mini project uh, the first week would be entirely dedicated towards learning basics of python so uh there are no prerequisites here uh we'll be going through the basics of python matplotlib and why do we need planners in the first place the second uh, week uh, the week 2 to 3 would be dedicated towards sampling based algorithms like rrt and visualization using matplotlib week 4 to 5.5 would be dedicated to understanding the graph based planners like prm a star and dijkstra and week 5.5 to 6 would be doubling down the earlier learned concepts about sampling based algorithms and implementing uh, some variants of rrt like rrt star or informed rrt star so coming towards the logics logistics uh, the mentors of this mini project are me aditya parandekar uh, yosh elma me lokik nakwa feel free to contact any of us uh, regarding any doubts weekly meetings and doubt sessions would be conducted to discuss updates uh, regarding this project or uh, doubts so yeah any questions Yeah so i guess that's it from my side if you don't have any questions i'll hand it over to sid who will be taking uh, the open cv part of uh, the next part yeah. thank you
Yeah, so uh, hello everyone. I'm Sid and I'll be taking introducing you to the OpenCV mini project or the computer vision mini project. So um, first of all, what is computer vision? Computer vision is simply a field of research which involves algorithms and theories that enable computers to understand or make sense of a visual input just like humans do. So it involves a lot of classical image processing as well as more recent concepts of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So we'll, for the sake of this mini project, we'll be mostly focusing on you know uh, classical image processing because there's a lot of research that has been done and there are lots of algorithms that involve that. But uh, learning-based approaches are inevitable ultimately. So uh, it's very important. Uh, computer vision plays a big role in robotic perception and the applications include object detection, gesture recognition, pose recognition, motion tracking, semantic segmentation. In fact, there are a lot of things that you can do with computer vision. So here are a few examples. Uh, as you can see here, there's like, uh, these are the things you can do with computer vision. There's classification, localization, like bounding boxes, object detection, instant segmentation, and this is an example of semantic segmentation on the lower left side. On the lower right side, you see uh, what uh, autonomous car should see when it's driving on the roads. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And the aim of this project in particular would be to do gesture detection using OpenCV. So OpenCV is an open source library. It's one of the largest library I think out there, which deals with computer vision. And uh, it has thousands of algorithms that have been implemented. All you need to do is like make function calls. So we'll be learning that to make a gesture detection stack that will detect, recognize, and even track gestures. So uh, this project will introduce you to all the libraries that we'll be using in Python, as well as the things you can do with gesture detection, like controlling robotics, arms, or cars, or communicating through sign language. In fact, the applications are endless. So the basic timeline is that in week one, we'll uh, just like other automation mini projects, we'll be covering Python basics with NumPy and Matplotlib. They are two libraries of Python. In week two, we'll focus more on handling images using basic NumPy and Matplotlib because uh, images are at the end just matrices and you can perform mathematical operations to you know morph them, do stuff, cool stuff with them. In week three, we'll start with OpenCV, the basics, and then advance and make more progress on it uh, towards week four and five. So there will be a final project in week five, including a few, like probably two assignments during the co uh, course of the project. So resources will be provided, obviously. Uh, and these are the mentors of the project, myself, Akanksha, Soham, Dhruv, and Devit. And uh, these are the contact details. You can check the handout for the entire, uh, all the other stuff. And uh, one more thing that uh, you don't need any advanced Python knowledge again. Uh, some basics will be covered in a probably a group session or something. And we'll be looking at uh, primarily using OpenCV. However, like further ahead, what lies further ahead in the field of computer vision is inevitably neural networks creep in, especially CNNs. And uh, concepts like deep learning become uh, important. So if you want to do a CV-related project after this project gets over, you'll probably need to start looking at deep learning and stuff. But for the aim of this project, we'll focus more on classical algorithms. And we may use some pre-trained models. And OpenCV provides all of them. So yeah, uh, I'll take any questions. I'll wait for some time until then.
I guess it's okay if someone knows nothing about Python or anything. Like we will introduce you to this. Like the first week we'll just cover the basics and stuff. So you get used to it. So you'll learn Python through the course of this project, including other libraries. And the handouts already have resources, so you can get started on basic Python if you want from now. Yeah, so cool. I guess that's it for this mini project. Next up, we'll have the neural networks mini project, uh, which Manan will take up. So hello everyone. I'm Mana Narora. Uh, I'm one of your, I'm one of the mentors for the Neural Networks Mini Project. So let's get started. Okay. So about neural networks. Uh, neural networks, as you can see, are a series of mathematical functions which are used to recognize patterns and relationships in a data set. Uh, neural networks are primarily inspired by the human brain and uh, how it works and how it processes the data. So here you can see a visual representation of, uh, of neural networks. Uh, neural networks are made up by nodes or links. Nodes, uh, the dots you can see here, sorry. The dots you can see here are the nodes. Uh, nodes are the nodes are basically those mathematical functions, and uh, the lines which you can see here are the links. Links connect one node to the rest of the nodes. Uh, each link has an associated weight and an activation level, and uh, each link has uh, basically its unique set of weights and uh, and activation levels. Okay, so in this project, you will be learning how to uh, you will be learning the math behind the neural networks and uh, how they are implemented on Python. And uh, Python uh, is the language which you are going to use, and NumPy is the library uh, with which we are going to implement all the neural networks. Okay, so progression. So in the first week, you will be learning the basic mathematics of neural networks and uh, 
how they work in theory uh, in the second week you will learning the basics of numpy and how to you know do ba some uh, basic operations in numpy enough to implement neural networks uh, in week 3 you will be implementing a, an exor neural network uh, obviously using numpy and week 4 you're going to implement an mnist neural network mnist neural network is basically uh, a digit classifier in which uh, you're going to uh, you're going to make a neural network which is going to classify handwritten digits from 0 to 9 so what you saw in the first slide this is basically a visual representation of a, of an mnist classifier and this is going to be your final project and uh, in the final submission we are going to consider both exor neural network and mnist neural network and after each week you are going to be given an assignment to complete further ahead so neural network is basically an entry point to uh, various subdivisions of deep learning like computer vision natural language processing and reinforcement learning and uh, although computer vision was uh, covered earlier but uh, if you know the basics of neural networks you'll be you will be able to appreciate uh, the concepts behind computer vision more okay so here you can see the there are two robots here playing chess and uh, this is basically an atari game uh, which google's deep mind uh, in, in which uh, google actually developed a bot using reinforcement learning which played the atari games and uh, yeah it did pretty good in those games okay so here 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 is a list of mentors uh, for this project i am manan and uh, okay so any questions also uh, handouts for all the uh, mini projects are going to be available on the erc website so you can check uh, those there so any questions okay so someone asks uh, does test engine require neural networks yes it does require neural networks and uh, yeah so you will be learning how to implement those neural networks further okay so an mnist neural network is basically uh, a program which would help you recognize handwritten digits from 0 to 9 so what you saw here in the first slide this is basically an mnist neural network uh, this is as you can see here 2 is going to be recognized and then 1 and these are all the handwritten digits okay so uh, basics of basic calculus and uh, matrices and determinants i think that would be enough uh, for this project and uh, okay so about exor neural network so exor is basically a gate 
uh, you'll be learning cs and phoenix peeps are going to learn more about it in their second year but basically xor is a gate just like your and or a not gates uh, it takes two inputs and gives out one output so you'll be implementing an xor neural network in which uh, you're going to give it inputs and uh, it is going to predict the output Oh yeah, huh. Uh, okay, so for this project, Python is a prerequisite and basics of calculus and matrices and determinants is also a prerequisite. Also, uh, basics of Python are going to be covered in one of the sessions. So if you can manage, you can do it there also. Any more questions? Yeah, uh, actually, any programming language uh, would do. Uh, any program, any programming language would do. Uh, just that you should know all the basics of programming, like if else for while loops, etc. You should be uh, very well versed with that. Uh, Python is actually a very easy language to pick up once you know any programming language. Also, uh, we would recommend you to look up the spec sheet to also, yeah, sorry. Uh, we would recommend you to look up uh, for the spec sheets of each of the mini projects in which you are interested in uh, to find out more details about them. Uh, link to the mini link to the handouts has been shared on chat so you can check out from there okay so thank you for attending this session and uh, i hope you have a nice day ahead also uh, please check out all the handouts uh, for all the mini projects from the erc website
deadline is uh, end of day 6th of feb okay thank you everyone